Hi, my name is Marcus, and uh, this is Servant King Unraveled. This program is called, Oh My God. That's a good name, don't you think? Oh My God. This program will clear up some misconceptions. These are concepts that people have taken and believe, but have missed the concept, hence a misconception. It's less aggressive than a deception, but basically the same. All it takes is one misconception to take the wrong turn, to change the truth of a thing. So these misconceptions require some explaining to understand them and need to be clarified in order to understand the rest of the programs. This program will also address the first and the most important commandment of God. And it says, I am the Lord your God, thy God, sorry, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So Egypt is a house of bondage. Now, the first misconception we're going to talk about is God. What is a God? Who is God? And so forth. There's a reason why people believe they obey God and keep His commandments. And here's the reason. The reason is because there is only one true God. You can ask anyone whether they believe in God or not. How many gods are there? They'll say one. If you ask an atheist, how many gods are there? Well, if there's a God, there's only one. So everyone knows there's only one God. This is common knowledge. In fact, God says this himself. He says in Deuteronomy, he says, Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. So if I asked you, are you God? You would say, no, of course not. Of course I'm not God. And religious creeds, they all make uh, statements like, um, you hear things like, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried, and, and on they go and they make their, their statement of faith or their belief. And people will say the various religions are different paths, all to the same God. Universities today are teaching courses, not in money, or law, no, no. They're teaching courses in comparative religions, comparing, I guess, different gods. But they're all the same one God. That's what they're being taught. And here is where the truth is used to deceive you. There is supposed to be only one God, but in fact, there are many. Now, if you believe that there's only one God, if you believe that, then it's impossible to believe that you are worshipping another god. And this is the crux of the misconception. <laughs> Could you be worshipping another god and not even know that you are doing it? Is it possible, is it possible you are worshipping something that you do not think is a god, but in fact is? Something that has all the qualities and properties of a god, as a supreme being. Everyone thinks there is only one God, but God. God doesn't think that. We all think that, not God. His first commandment says to us, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. If there are no other gods, that command is utterly stupid, certainly unnecessary, redundant, not needed. God, who is supposed to know everything, does not know there is only one God. So what does the first commandment really mean? Well, it starts with, I'm your God, I'm the supreme being, who brought you out of Egypt. who brought you out of Egypt, the house of bondage. Now, why does he say that? Oh, yeah, I remember the story about uh, the story of sending in plagues and rescuing the people and parting the Red Sea. And um, I think uh, Moses was leading the way. I think Charlton Heston played Moses. It was great. 
But what was the importance of saying, I brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage? We see, you see, we are trained to skim over things. Today, most commandments would just say the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. If that's what God wanted you to know, that's what he would have said. That's not what the commandment says. It starts with something even more important yet. You will learn that in law, every word is important. And you will learn that in the word of God, every word is extremely important. He doesn't mince words and he says only exactly what he means. This is why the scripture is probably hard to read. It doesn't flow like literature. It is a technical book on law. It must be precise. Can't change a single word. So when he says, I brought you out of Egypt, he is saying, I brought you out of a God, a false, foreign, alien God. I brought you out of this God that you were in bondage to. There was a bond, a binding there. Next, he says, you shall have no other gods before me. You see, Egypt, in Egypt, you obey Egyptian law. In God's kingdom, you obey God's law. So Egypt is a God. Canada is a God. The United States of America is a God. Germany is a God. In Germany, they practice German law, not God's law. These are all theocracies. The people combined as one become the theocracy. Everyone obeys the one. A God, sorry, a God is a lawgiver. A god is a sovereign, makes the rules. So the sovereign state of Egypt, the sovereign state of Canada, of America, of Germany, the sovereign state of Texas. This is why they can kill Texans. They just can't kill a man. Oh, that man has to be a Texan in person. Now I will be bringing up this scripture many times throughout the programs. I'm going to read this to you. And uh, this is very, very important. First time I read this, I never understood this. In Exodus 10, 31, it says, this is right after the flood, or very soon after the flood. It said, these are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. In their nations? It's only like eight, ten people alive. That's it. What do you mean they're nations? You see, a family is a nation. Nation means to be born. Okay? Don't confuse nation with anything else. We're going to be using different words in future programs, and we'll be getting to that. And it goes on, and it says, The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had a brick for stone, and they had slime for mortar. So it sounds like masons, eh? They're going to build something. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach up to heaven. And let us make us a name. See? A family name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And God came down and looked at down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded the children of men builded not God and the Lord said behold the people is one they've joined together as one and they all have one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they imagined to do this is really really important okay so we just use a different word and no one can see it a sovereign nation, a God. Gods are sovereign. Gods are sovereign. Sovereigns are gods. And of course, God knows there can be other gods, and that's why he says, no other gods. You see how this deception is, or this truth is used to deceive us? So, let us make us a name, a, a nation, a family name. Canadian, American, Polish, German, whatever. Forming or constituting a country is the making of a family. A corporation is a family, a community, a city. These are all families, but they're not the proper family that God created. So it's first, so a family of gods united as one is a sovereign nation. 
His first commandment is not to obey his laws, no, but to not to have any other gods in his place or higher than him. God is the King of kings, Lord of lords, God of gods. He actually says that, God of gods, here. <laughs> For the Lord your God is God of gods. You notice God, capital of gods, smaller G, okay, Lord of lords. A terrible and mighty God, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. That's Deuteronomy 10, 17. So theism is different than deism. People don't know this. The, I explained this in a further program too. The, the, the-ism, the one. This is the revealed word of God. This is the true God. Deism, a deity is a God, not the God. Okay? Remember, our focus will not be diverted from property. We will follow the property. Now, just for a moment, let's lose this whole concept of law and let's think in terms of business. Let's call law my business. Whose business is this? When Jesus was on earth, he said he was here about his father's business, not his own business, his father's business. He was here about the business of his father's property, the kingdom of God. He says, I am in this world, but I am not of this world. I'm not of Canada, of America, of South Africa. No, no. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. He's born of something else, and so are we. All law is really that simple. Who made the property? Who is the owner? Who can make a rule regarding the property? In the olden days, a court would say, all those having business before this honorable court come forward and be heard. You got business here? Good. If you have no business in this court, well then get lost. None of your business. So. so when you're in court, you must be involved in some kind of business, somebody's business. If you don't own anything, I don't know whose business you're involved in. But Now religions show and explain in great detail how some religions, like Catholics for example, worship the sun. It's all Mithraism. They worship on Sunday. They are pagans. They worship the god of Isis, Horus, and Saturn, and all these other things. And there's symbols all over the place that I don't doubt that's all put out there. And that is what IHS stands for, which is on certain things. And what does the Catholic Church do or say about this in response to all this criticism? Nothing. Why? Because you have taken the bait and you've been sucked in. Catholics in Canada worship the same God as Baptists, Methodists, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Atheists. They all practice the same law. How do I know? Because I can see it. I'm not blind. Everybody obeys the same law in Canada. Everybody obeys the same law in America. Everyone obeys the same law in Germany. This is the insanity of religions. No religion has anything to do with the law. It's all a sideshow to keep you diverted from seeing what you should see. Your religion does not own any property, your church doesn't, and neither do you. It's all just pretend stuff. It means less than nothing. The sun that the Catholics worship does not own any property, and it does not make any rules. The sun can't make any rules. Rule of law, it's not a god. God is not concerned with the sun, or statues, or all this other stuff people think. His commandments were written for you. He's concerned about you. He wrote it to you. You're the one that can read. Okay? So you think there's only one God. So nothing else could possibly be God. Then religions are worshipping all different kind of gods and they all fight each other. Argue with each other. You're the pagan. No, no, man. You're the pagan, man. No, no, you're the pagan. Which, of course, means countrymen. That's what a pagan is, defined as countrymen. Not a man made in the image or likeness of God. Not a godlike man, no, no, a country man. Totally different. This is the definition of pagan countrymen. And all these religious people are all countrymen. Show me one that isn't. I hope there is somewhere, but I don't know where there is one. And the God everyone is worshipping indeed, in reality, in truth, and in fact, is their country. <laughs> their love of country. Nobody even thinks it's a god. What do you think an anthem is? An anthem is a hymn. It's a hymn to your god. That's what a, that's what a hymn is, to sing to your god. This is what patriotism is, right? Pate, patra, father. And that is the god 
God is talking about in the scripture. Sort of. There's no twist. And the people who run this world are laughing their ass off at you. Not the atheists. They're not laughing at the atheists. They're not hypocrites. It's the religious people they're laughing their ass off at. They go, what idiots. They don't understand the principles of law. They don't understand property. They don't understand creation, constitution, and so forth. Now, isn't that a great deception or conditioning of how we think? Now, we're not done with this yet. No, the deception gets even better. There's another twist to this. It takes another turn. We all obey the law of the land. Where was I here? We all obey the law of the land, our country, and that is the God we obey. But a country like Canada came into being in 1867. So we made our own God and serve it. We serve our country. What does God say? He says, for the gods of the nations are idols. Not gods, they're idols. The gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. First Chronicles 16, 26. For all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. This is a little bit different again. Yes, your country is the God you serve and love. But are in fact idols. It's done through images and We'll be showing you that within a couple programs here now. But who is the country? It's the people as one. So it's the people. So who is the real God we obey and serve? It's ourself. We're a self-governing nation as one. A self-governing society. We are the God and our country is the idol. Idolatry, the most serious crime any man can commit. It's treason. What happens when you commit treason? You die. You get killed for treason. And you lose all your property. That's it. Everything. You have no rights, no, no uh, privileges, nothing. So there's only us people here. Remember when I said that? I said nobody knows what that means. Well, I hope and by now you know exactly what that means. The scripture was written for you. You are the only one that can read. Your country cannot read, the sun can't read, a statue can't read. The word of God was revealed for you and to you. Only you can claim the property of God as your own and make rules over it. Only you can be a lawmaker. Only you can be a God in the place of God. See, we make up imaginary things and then start calling it names. Duh. Right? We make up organizations. We say, oh, the people, no, the people are okay. And it's that rotten organization when all those people get together and become one. That, what do you think the one is? Right? We'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. There is nothing else. You are the God that God is talking about when he said, no other gods before me. And we're all looking for they and them. They and them are doing this to us. Do not place yourself above the true God or supplant God or usurp him. Do not steal his property, become its owner and make your own laws, your own will. Do not take jurisdiction over his property. The word is autonomy and self-will, which means self-mastery. Malachi 3, when God's telling the people, return to me and I will return to you. And, God, and the people ask God, well, or God says, well, man robbed God, yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? And God says, in tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. And everyone knows they are not God, and no possible way to be a God. It couldn't be me. Oh, it's the Catholic Church, or the God Zeus, or the Son, or whatever people believe is a false God. No, the only false god there can ever be is you and I. That's it. There is nobody else here on earth. Why are you trying to blame some, something doesn't even exist? And when you can understand that, you will start to understand much of the scripture. And when you understand that, you will start to understand how the legal system works that you are involved in also. Politicians, presidents, monarchies all claim to be under God. The President of the United States and monarchs all around the world have said we are all children of God. We are a nation under God. And the God they are under is you. These leaders all serve you. 
That's what God's saying. He says, everything's going to backfire on you if you don't obey my law. Not the true God, creator of heaven and earth. They just use the word God and you think of the true God. They have to say that so that you don't think you are violating the first commandment of God. Matthew 20. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Everything is opposite. Everything is backwards when you mess with God's creation. And the people who run the world are laughing their ass off at you. Right? I keep saying that these people that run the world, of course, we're the ones that run the world. We're the Satanists, but we don't know it. But there are people that actually are Satanists and run the world. While you voluntarily lose your inheritance, your labor, and your life to them, which is what happens when you break the law of God. It is God who does this to you for breaking the law. The law is the law. I told you the people who run the world use the law of God to get you to break the law. Because it is the word of God that is the law. Whether you believe in God or not, and your legal system is also the word of God. Your word. You. So there is, so, so is there more than one true God? No. But you can be as God by taking his place. You are to appear as God in his likeness, not be as God. That is what Jesus did. I know it sounds almost blasphemous, but it's not. This is a huge misconception. It's actually a deception because of all the, what the religious people tell you, which leads to people believing Jesus is God. I told you we're going to address that in detail later. What's the next misconception? Kingdom of God, where is it? Anyone know? Must be up there, eh? Well... Where is it? I asked a minister type scholar who had a doctorate in divinity. Yeah, could you imagine having a doctorate, a PhD in divinity? A PhD in the study of God. I asked him, where is the kingdom of God? He says, nobody knows. It's not really a place but an idea. I don't know. I asked him if he knew where the kingdom of Saudi Arabia is. No, oh, he knew where that one was. Well, I know where the kingdom of God is. Here's a clue. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Hmm. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath, and there is none else. So where is his kingdom? Everywhere. Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will will be done on earth, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. So where is the kingdom of God? Everywhere and everything. That's where. And this dumb guy with a doctorate in divinity doesn't know. Doesn't know. I think the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Kingdom of Canada is an idea. The Kingdom of Canada came into being in 1867. That was its beginning. I also think that if we ever dissolve the Kingdom of Canada, you will find the Kingdom of God will reappear by default. So what was the purpose of bringing people out of the Kingdom of Egypt? To bring them into the Kingdom of God. Now, you can be in the kingdom of God and not be in the kingdom of God. You are in the kingdom of God physically, but not in law. If God is not your God, if he is not your king whom you obey, if God is not ruling over you, then you are not in the kingdom of God, even though you are all in his kingdom physically, in reality. It's just an illusion. When we get to what a constitution is in the next program, you will see the illusion we are living, or should I say, that we give life to. 
Okay. Next misconception, dominion. What is dominion? Genesis. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Dominion. What does it mean? Sovereign or supreme authority, the power of governing and controlling. The Word of God reveals to us that He made everything. He explains that He made us. So we have a creator, an owner. We have an owner that owns us. Everything is his property, his law, his will alone. Pretty simple, natural justice. People think they were given dominion and have the right to rule over everything. You will read this in essays on the history of law and by great philosophers about this rationale and the theory behind the social contract by John Locke and these other great philosophers. We got everything from God and dominion, and now we have to figure out the rest. All these great philosophers on law will always acknowledge God. They never talk about evolution. They're not that stupid. They just start with God who made everything, gave it to us, and now we're on our own. We have the exclusive right of possession, enjoying, and disposing of a thing. We have ownership. Webster says, he studied the scripture. He says, in the beginning of the world, the Creator gave to man dominion over the earth, over the fish of the sea and the fowls of the air, and over every living thing. This is the foundation of man's property in the earth and in all of its productions. And people say, oh, goody. Oh, goody. See, I have dominion over my property and over myself. Excuse me. Excuse me. Those who teach that God gave man dominion over everything to do their own will are lying deceivers. Do you think God said, I made you and all there is, I give you dominion, good luck, I'll see you at the finish line. When you go, you know, to the pearly gates, St. Peter, you know the jokes. Good luck, I'll see you at the finish line. Is that what you think? God says 172 times in the scripture, keep my commandments, keep my commandments, keep my commandments. 172 times, specifically, keep my commandments. Jesus said, if you want to enter into the kingdom of God, do the will of my Father. Do the will of my Father. Keep the commandments. Then someone reads something in the scripture that sounds like you can make your own laws and obey man's laws. These things are read out of context, off point, and with a preconceived diversion in your head, and a lot of this is done through the words. You've got to look at it very carefully. 172 times, obey me, obey me, keep my commandments. Then, he, then you find that just one or two or three things. And you think he, he, says, uh, so he says, keep my commandments, keep my commandments, and then he says, uh, oh, forget all that. Oh, what the hell was I thinking? Go ahead and do whatever you want. Sorry. Is that what you think the scripture is all about? Is, is that what you think is in the Bible? You can ask some religious man, and I have. Do you obey God and do his will? I usually just say, do you do the will of God? They go, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then I ask them, well, what are his basic Ten Commandments? Oh, um, yeah, I don't, uh, well, uh, I don't know those exactly. Huh? What kind of insane delusion are people living? I mean, that's beyond all belief. God lists what you were do given dominion over, and it does not include yourself. He never gave you the right to self-governing. He gave you dominion over his creation, but under him. You do not have original dominion unless you think you can create something, which you can't. And God has to give you dominion for a very good reason. How are you going to do his will with his creation to fulfill his plan, meaning you too, if he doesn't give it to you? This is what the world was created for. Dominion is not jurisdiction. Jurisdiction means to speak the law, to say what the law is, to make the commands. Dominion is the power to exercise the law, exercise the authority, to have dominion over. 
We have dominion from God. We get a power from God to exercise authority. This is all part of the swindle. This is all going to come together. Very valuable thing we've been swindled out of. So all this misconception is good religion, but very bad law. Holding and exercising God's power, authority, and will gives you dominion and makes you a servant king, not the king. Okay, a servant king, not the king. Now, I wasn't going to reveal this until the end, but well, what the hell? Think seriously about this. A servant king, as a servant king, you are given the power, authority, and dignity of Almighty God Himself. Wow. Just think how that relates to everything. Being God's vice regent, His right hand man, His temple, His vehicle, His means of accomplishing His will on earth. Wow. That's a lot of power to hold. Making you believe you have that you can exercise original dominion according to your will is very necessary to pulling off the swindle. More on this later too. Remember, you lost what is yours because you took what is not yours. There's a big difference between being given something and taking something. We will learn that God's system or plan cannot be compromised. It is impossible and you will suffer. James 2.19, Thou believest that there is one God? Do you? Thou believest that there is one God? Then thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Next concept. Satan. What a puny little guy that Satan, eh? <laughs> I had to do that, because Satan thinks he's so big, he's so uh, clever, great deceiver, so I just made him little, you know. What is Satan? If there is a God, there is a Satan. If there is good, there is evil. People tend to forget about this Satan guy. He's as real as God and as real as you and me. Why? Because there can be no wrong without right. If nothing is right, then nothing can be wrong. These are opposite extremes. If there is no God, absolute good, there is no Satan, absolute evil. If nothing is evil, then everything is good. Everything's fine. There's nothing evil. We decide what is right and wrong, don't we? We decide if this word is true, if his word is true or not. We decide who is God and who is Satan. We decide what is good and what is evil. Our legal system has good and evil. We decide who the devil is. There are things that God says are perfectly fine. And in fact, you are commanded to do them. And we lock up people in jail for 20, 30, 40 years of their life for the exact same thing. And there are things that God says you will be put to death for. He says they're very serious crimes that we say are not only fine, but if you hate them, we will put you in jail for hating them. You are offensive. You know, sometimes I'll see people on television that talking about their religion and everyone assumes that's about God. And then they'll say something and the interviewer will go, well, why do you think that? And, you know, sort of castigating this guy. Why doesn't the guy just turn around and say, nothing to do with me. God says this. Attack God. Hate God first. God actually says in the scripture, if you do what he wants you to do, he says, don't worry if people hate you. He says, because they've hated me first. They hate me first before they can hate you. So we need to pause and think about this for a moment, how evil this is. Destroying someone's whole life. And this goes on in our society every day. Locked up like an animal in a cage for their whole life. For nothing for nothing wrong according to God. This is how evil this whole deception thing is. Or, we make a law that will prevent you or reduce the chances of you breaking the law. You haven't broken the law, but you've broken the law that would prevent you from breaking the law. Duh. And we think that's just fine and dandy. And we always know the reason why we make laws like that. And if you really know the reason, it's always greed. Just someone's greed is behind all that. 
or we um, and then we make a law preventing you from preventing you from preventing you from breaking the law <laughs> so you end up breaking the law that prevents you from breaking the law but you never broke the law you never did anything wrong you only broke the law that prevented you from breaking the law and there are people in jail for the rest of their life and have done nothing wrong all because of the greatest hoax ever played on man your legal system is not law Real law protects you, your rights, and, and your duties. Your legal system, and this is every man's legal system, is not law. A legal system is a system of self-governing bills, debts, obligations, and promises of performance to act, which are governed by the rule of law. The law in the hands of man is used for greed, to oppress you, to obtain control over you, and to steal. By the end of these programs, you will learn how you have had, how you will learn how you had everything, and then lost everything because of one act. Your legal system creates crimes that are not crimes, self-imposed debts and punishments, all because you know better than God. Yep, we're smarter than God. All because you did not keep the commandments of God. If you had you would not be looking for a solution today. All because you own no property. All because you were deceived into breaking the law of God. All because you do not believe in God. How important is it for evil to control the knowledge of God? And it started on day one in the garden. The scripture explains everything. The scripture are the principles of law. But you have to want to find it. This program is called, Oh My God. Oh my God, what have I done? Well, I'll tell you and show you in the next program what we've all done. Till then, my name is Marcus.